Today I'm going to show you ladies how to set up a Harley Ben fusion guitar. Recently one of you beautiful ladies asked me how to set up these guitars. At least how I would set up them. And there are a couple of things which I address in uh, my videos already. But um, maybe I can, um, I can explain you the process when I get a new guitar. So, um, first of all, there are different models of the Fusion guitars which I have. And as you can see here, there's my favorite one. Uh, the one with the ebony fretboard and the HH configuration. And also here, this one, it has the HSH configuration and the Wilkins Bridge. And the other one with the HH, they have the, uh, what is it called? Floyd Rose 1000 series terminal. Also, some of these fusions here, they have uh, the roasted maple neck and fretboard, like this one. And they're a little bit different in the behavior. But, uh, okay, let's start with this guitar here. I will take it. And uh, this is one which um, I got, I think I got the same model maybe five or six times. But this guitar is, ah, let me put the uh, camera here, is set up perfect, perfect in my opinion. And um, I have to say, these guitars, although it's the same model, they vary a little bit. So, first of all, let me show you the bridge here. Um, and with this guitar, I hope you can see it, the bridge is almost in line with the, uh, with the wood here. It's, uh, yeah, perfectly parallel, but also it's, uh, I can set it up far down so that it is, as I said, in line with the, the top wood here. But that is not the case with all of these guitars. So, um, first of all, when I got a new guitar, I'm putting my favorite strings on the guitar. And I'm using uh, 52s to 10s, which are a little bit thicker. So, uh, yeah, heavy bottom light top uh, but of course um, if you're using and uh, this 46 is to 10 or some other gauge I'd recommend to uh, yeah, put the strings on the guitar and then the first thing you will see is um, especially if you are uh, going to a uh, thicker gauge like I do maybe the bridge will come up like this because the strings have more tension if they are thicker. So what you have to do then is, um, yeah, you have to tune the strings. And uh, always, uh, if you see the bridge is coming a little bit up, up front like this, you have to tighten the, uh, the springs here. So you can do this with a screwdriver and then just uh, yeah, using these screws here you can access through the holes. Of course, you can open this thing and add new springs here, but um, with most cases, I think if you switch like me from uh, standard tuning 46s to 52s, then maybe it's enough to, to tighten the feathers here with the screws. You don't need to uh, install additional springs. And that can take a little bit of time, of course. Um, until the bridge is straight and you have the, uh, the strings in tune. Next thing I will do is um, usually I'm uh, I'm straighten the neck. So uh, that means you have to check out if, for example, here maybe in the middle you have a little bit more uh, neck is going down, so you have a little bit more distance from the string to the neck and to the fretboard. And uh, if that is the case, I like to tighten the neck a little bit so that it will come down here and that it is almost straight in parallel with the strings. And usually I do this with um, here the truss rod. 
So if you can see that somewhere here in the middle, maybe in between the 7th and the uh, 15th fret, there's suddenly a little bit more or too much space. Maybe in the other sections it's, it might be okay, the space, the distance from the strings to the... But in this section here in the middle, it's um, too much space for you. That means the neck is some, somehow like this. Then you have to tighten the stress rod and uh, you can enter this uh, thing here and then just uh, yeah, push it this direction. So it's uh, basically, what is it? If you look from here, it's uh, clockwise. Yeah. So that's the case of here, uh, suddenly you have too much uh, of space. And, um, and the other uh, case, if you have too much space here, then you have to release this uh, a little bit and then put it counterclockwise. And also if you want to have more space here, if you have some string fret bus in this area here, for example, that means maybe um, you have to release the, uh, the truss rod a little bit. So uh, yeah, my goal is to have more or less the same distance in between the strings and the fretboard. And I don't know if you can see it, uh, I don't set it as um, the action as low as possible. Because the thing with that is, um, if you do it, uh, the string cannot vibrate that far. You will get fret bus sometimes and I like to have uh, yeah, very clean tones. You can hear the pitch and I don't want to have the additional noise of the fretboard. And yeah, so for that reason I have to set it like, I don't know, uh, what is it? Maybe here in between the uh, wood, the, the uh, fretboard and the low E string, it's maybe about two or three millimeters distance, I think. But for my playing, it's, it's okay. It doesn't um, mean that you can't play fast. For me, it's I'm uh, pushing the strings with the left hand very lightly, very soft. And uh, so it doesn't matter if the string is a little bit higher, but you have the benefit of that you have cleaner, clean tones. And the overall uh, height or yeah, distance from the string to the neck is of course, um, adjustable here with the uh, with the bridge, so you can um, high uh, or I said a little bit higher if you use these two strings, uh, two two screws here, and mount a little bit higher. By uh, yeah, it will come out of the body if you turn it counterclockwise. If you turn it clockwise, it will go into the body. And um, yeah, that is how I set up this guitar. And by when uh, adjusting the, the bridge here, um, usually I go like maybe uh, yeah, in quarters or maybe half uh, turns. So I'm uh, turning it maybe about 180 degrees, both screws of course, it should be straight or the same height and, and both screws and then try it again because that can make a huge difference. If you are just uh, moving around maybe one or, or two times it might be too much for difference. So yeah, sometimes it's only a quarter which I, uh, which I adjust here. But uh, yeah, that's it for, uh, for the neck adjustment. Sometimes when I install new strings and I tune them, the first thing is maybe um, to set the height of the of the bridge, and then usually if you have the desired height or distance here, maybe on the on the upper frets, then you you may see how the how the neck is curved if it if it needs a little bit of truss rod adjustment. And also the truss rod is something which I have to adjust from time to time, especially if the weather is changing, if it's colder and like now in the winter, then the wood will work and it might be uh, necessary to maybe tighten it up a little bit or losing it. But um, that is very easy here and very nice, a nice feature that it has this 
truss rod here, so uh, easily adjustable. And um, as far as the pickups go, I like to to mount these pickups very um, far away from the strings for maybe many people, so that they don't deliver that much output, but also you can reduce the annoying uh, scratchiness in the highs. I don't know if you can see it here, how the pickups are, uh, how the distance is, I would say, about five millimeters below the, uh, the strings. As you can see, this pickup here is not straight. That is due to the, to the poor foam that is under the pickup. If you remove the pickup, you will see that there's only poor foam under this and you can, if you enter something a little bit more stable, a little bit more foam, for example, you can get them straight. But I didn't do it with this guitar. It sound, sounds great to me, so I didn't see any point. And you can lower the pickup if you uh, yeah, tighten the screws here. Of course, maybe you may know that. That should also be in parallel to uh, the strings. Uh, of course, horizontal to the string direction, but I mean, uh, both sides should have this, the same height. And also, uh, uh, they should be straight. So yeah, my distance is maybe five millimeters, sometimes a little bit lower, but um, that works. So you can also try to set it as far down as possible. I do that sometimes. It goes a little bit more, down maybe up to seven millimeters or something it's still working of course you need more gain in your amp but uh, I think these guitars if you adjust your amp and your uh, your preamp especially they will sound great so let me get another one of these guitars So first of all, uh, here we have the same model, but as you can see here, I have to m set the bridge much higher. It's coming out here, it's about two millimeters higher than, or you can see the whole metal plate is coming out of the wood. That may look straight at first, it doesn't bother me at all. Bridge is straight. Also, the string action is nice. It's the same more like on the other guitar. Everything else is more or less the same. Just you have or I had to, yeah, to mount the, the bridge much higher. And it was, at first it was irritating. But, uh, yeah, it's working. And I cannot see any uh, disadvantages of that. Except that the bridge is a little bit coming out of the body. Maybe for some people it's an optical issue, but not for me. So, uh, yeah, there you can see that um, you cannot set up all these guitars exactly the same way. Because they are mounted always, a there's a little bit of tolerance in the, uh, yeah, the production, I think, and you have to take that in, into account. But as far as the neck uh, is concerned, also, maybe here the neck is, is a little bit uh, higher or coming out a little bit more out of the body than on the other guitar. That might be the reason why I had to um, set up the bridge a little bit higher. And I can also s tell you sound-wise they are more or less the same. So it's not a big difference. Let me get another. And another thing is um, with the uh, with the roasted maple, for example, or also with the maple fretboards. Of course, I adjust them the same way. But I, what I found out, especially with the roasted maple, is maybe I can get one for you. So here we have it. And what I found out with that guitar is, and also with the other roasted maple the neck tension seems to be a little bit different. So with these guitars here, usually they don't have the, to tighten the, uh, the screw here, like on the one with the ebony fretboard. In most cases, I don't have to set it very tight. In some, some cases, I also have, 
had to release it and uh, set in the other way. So counterclockwise, tighten it like that. That means the neck is a little bit too straight and I had to, uh, or yeah, I had, I had some Fred bus, uh, what was it? Here in the middle. And um, yeah, so that was something which uh, I, I uh, yeah, found out with these uh, roasted maple necks. The maple necks, uh, they didn't have that. They were uh, more or less similar to the ebony fretboards. But with the roasted, uh, something going on. I don't know. Maybe it has to do something with the humidity of the wood. Or I don't know. I'm not an expert of, of woods. But I will get now the HSH, which is set up uh, a little bit different. So here I brought one of my HSHs, uh, also with the ebony fretboard. And uh, of course they come with the Wilkinson bridge. But the first thing here is also, I'm installing my uh, favorite strings, string gauge. And also, because they're a little bit thicker, I have to tighten the screws here a little bit to get more tension in the springs until the uh, the bridge is in parallel. So you will recognize it will come up if you are installing a higher string gauge or thicker string gauge. What I also do then is uh, I'm adjusting the height of the string uh, of the bridge. I personally don't like it if, uh, if the strings have, uh, or they're mounted in maybe this form so that, or I like to have the same height of the strings everywhere, almost. And usually these uh, saddles here mount a little bit higher in the middle. So I reduce that by turning down these smaller screws in here. Not with this, you need a, the smaller thing and then you can set it down so that the saddles come down to the metal plate here. As you can see, they are almost, almost down. There's no space in between, which is something which I do. So you have to adjust these two small screws in these holes here for each saddle, if you want to do that. And uh, yeah, then of course you have to adjust the overall height of the bridge, like with Floyd Rose, with these two screws here. So in some guitars, I have to uh, put a little bit higher, same like with the Floyd. And uh, here it's all, um, it's in par parallel with the body and there's almost no space in between the body and the, the bridge, as you can see. But uh, in some guitars I have to, the, the bridge coming up maybe one or two millimeters, which is also okay. Same principle like with the Floyd, here are these two screws. And it will come up if you turn this thing clockwise and always quarters or half turns are enough, at least in my case. Then it's the same procedure here, adjusting the, the neck. If you have like a, a U shape, you have to tighten it up. If you look from here, clockwise. You can set it tight, but it's not, uh, don't overdo it because then the neck will break. But that said, it's really, if you can do it with these two fingers here, put one here and with a thumb, then it's still okay, I think. If you need a hammer or something there, maybe you should release the tension a little bit. Yeah, and then if the strings are in parallel with the fretboard, usually I adjust the uh, pickup height. Also almost like a five millimeters. Sometimes with these HSH guitars, I come back uh, a little bit closer to the strings with the pickups like here, it's maybe about four millimeters. And that uh, is due to the fact that these, um, these bridges, the Wilkinsons, they seem to have more mids and more, less of these harsh frequencies. So uh, yeah, that's what I did do with these guitars. Also, uh, what I uh, did with some of these guitars, I removed these uh, roller string trees. Because here, sometimes you get a little bit of tuning issues when doing very 
heavy dive bombs. And as always with the G-string, and uh, yeah, I think the D-string, because I think they're pushed down by these string trees here. They don't go back in shape exactly like they were before he did the dive bomb action. Yeah, but um, yeah, well, as I said before in many videos, these Wilkins and Bridges are not the best choice for heavy dive bombing. But other than that, they stay in tune very fine and they also sound great. So I love both of these models. Especially here, the HSH is of course more flexible tone-wise. You have these in-between positions. Uh, strat like very nice yeah so um, I hope that's everything you want to know the pickups um, I set them all in the same uh, distance to the strings also the single coil so here maybe all four or five millimeters if the pickups are too too strange here or not straight yeah, yeah I, have to, I have to remove them and enter proper foam below the pickups then it's working Yeah, so I hope this helps you and if you've got further questions, please post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.